and welcome to another video. I hope you are all doing well, year 12s, and today we're going to be talking about information styles. Now, as you can see, there's lots and lots of information styles, so we are splitting this topic into two videos, otherwise it would be a half an hour video and you would have to have a cup of tea and biscuits and uh, pause quite often. So I decided let's just split this into two. It's still going to be lengthy, but not half an hour. Okay, so let's start with a little starter. And your starter is to create a mind map of sources from which you receive information on a typical day school and from which you receive information on a day over the weekend. Um, why am I asking you to think about this? Well, it's interesting and important to realize that different sources will uh, provide different types of data and those different types of data will have different formats, okay? So have a think, how do you get information when you're in school and how do you get any information when you're actually at the weekend with your friends, with your family? Create a little mind map. Please don't take a long time. Take like five, 10 minutes max just to start thinking about how different sources actually provide you with data. Okay, so once that is done, uh, please carry on with the video. I would suggest that you do a little bit of a pause, do the starter, and then go back to the video. Okay. Text and numerical. Now, these are two different types of data format and two different types of data format that we actually use quite often. Text is a written or typed format of information, provides details, summarized, and explanations, and a large amount of text can be difficult and time consuming. Now, text, it's one of the data formats that we use more often, as I said. Normally, it's suitable for informal and formal um, situations. It's normally easy and you can write in different languages, which is obviously a bonus. Um, the problem with text is uh, spelling mistakes. And the fact that sometimes interpretation can lead to something incorrect. And um, in, it is not the most engaging one. So if I ask you to read uh, um, an essay with 5,000 words, it's not as engaging as watching a video or uh, listening to a podcast, okay? Um, it is, though, one of the most common ways uh, of displaying information is text. Even when we have others, like for example numbers, we sometimes need some uh, text to support that. Um, the numerical format is one of my favorites, I must say. I mean, I'm a little bit of a matty here, so I do like my numbers, but the reason why I like them a lot is because they are universal. So a number is a number no matter what language you speak, and that is very powerful because when you draw a number, um, that number represents the same thing in Portuguese, in English, in Latin, uh, German, whatever language, okay? So uh, numerical information is represented by numbers. We normally use that when we want to represent anything that is like statistical, um, any, especially statistics. We do like to show the numbers in statistics uh, because it's easier to understand, okay, than standard text. The problem is that when we are inputting longer numbers, sometimes you can make mistakes um, as humans, all right? And obviously, as well, uh, th there are some data that we actually think there are numbers but they can't be stored as numbers like for example a phone number because it starts with zero and actually a number will take that zero away because zero on the left side is uh, useless okay uh, yeah so that is uh, numbers and text now if you think about it um, in all of your school life you see numbers and text quite often okay those are very powerful in uh, displaying information and they can display information in a very clear and easy to understand way okay video and audio now interesting enough i think i would never uh, really i never really thought about how um, important audio was in teaching um, until i came home obviously you might be thinking but are you serious you speak with us every lesson i know but i, d I don't know i never thought like actually recording something would be so powerful but obviously it is because 
we talk with you every day. We explain um, the um, content to you. And recording that explanation is actually something that is going to give you the same feeling and understanding, hopefully. Okay, so let's start with audio. Audio is an information type that uses, obviously, sound waves and normally you use that in music. Um, like I said, nowadays, I don't think you just use it in music. You can use it for lessons like I'm doing it now. You can use it when you're texting someone. So my um, sister, she, she doesn't like to type. So she always speaks and send me a little recording of what she needs to say. And I mean, a lot of people do that quite often. Uh, the problem is that sometimes it's not suitable. So if I'm trying to record something, I need to make sure that my environment is quiet. Or if I'm trying to listen to something, I need to make sure my environment is quiet. Otherwise, it's very hard to do it. Um, you can argue with me, but now we have noise cancelling headphones, etc. Yes, we do. But still, it is... Uh, not the best environment when it's too loud too noisy okay users can listen to the information when they are otherwise busy so um it's the same remember when i was talking about the podcast it's the same kind of idea you listen to a podcast because you're doing something so you would listen to this audio um it's an audio format you would listen to it because you might be on a run or a you might be cooking or you might actually be trying to fall asleep and you decide, well, let's just listen to Miss Silva's videos because they are so exciting. Um, the next one is video. So videos are usual uh, visual formats of information and often, obviously, they have audio. Uh, the problem with videos is that they take uh, a lot of space and a lot of time. Okay, because the videos might have a mistake, might have an issue, you need to actually eliminate those issues, uh, you need to manipulate the video, make sure it looks good. Um, on the other hand, they're so engaging and easier to follow, okay? So having a video, it's way better than having a lot of text. So for example, again, this um, recording that I'm doing, the PowerPoint doesn't really have a lot of information, but because I'm talking with you, I think it's easier. If I had to put all the information about video and audio, <laughs> it would be a lot of slides, okay? Awesome. And the last one that I'm going to talk to you about today is graphic and animated graphics, okay? So graphics um, are a visual form of information. So I would say like a graphic, a picture, a logo, a diagram, they're very, very powerful. Again, they are good if um, you speak a different language because a photo, you know, you can still understand, doesn't really matter what language you speak. So it's multilingual, okay? Graphics can present an idea or a message uh, immediately so the moment you see it you get a reaction um, uh, the problem is that they might take a little bit longer to load uh, in your network now the good thing about graphics as well is when you associate graphics with other forms so for example if I want to show you something statistically and I have numbers and I add like a, a picture or a graphic that will that actually visually is easy to understand you'd normally add a chart which we'll talk later um, next video but it will be easy to understand or you can actually associate an image with an explanation as well which will make it easier to understand and the last one for today is animated graphics now animated graphics are images with multiple frames such as an animate of the heart showing individual steps so it's literally an animation, so it's like a GIF, okay? So it shows you different movements, but it's, it's limited. Um, can be under, understood by all age, uh, ages. Again, multi-language because it's visual, it's something that you can see, doesn't really need any explanation. The problem is that it takes time to create uh, and, you know, to do the annotations. It's, it's lengthy to do it. All right, so we talked about uh, six different types today and I want you to do this task. 
and the task case I want you to go back to the first slide and check all the information styles that are outlined there and I want you to create your own PowerPoint where you describe you tell me the purpose examples explanation benefits and drawbacks of each one of them obviously Tomorrow I'll be talking about the others and you have another set of tasks to do, which will probably be some exam questions and uh, making your, your mind map. Now, for this particular task, I'm asking you to do a PowerPoint um, because I find that it's easier for the amount of content. If you rather create a little mind map or a knowledge organizer about this, that's fine as well. As long as you have all of the... Um, outline details that I ask. All right, so I hope you have a wonderful day and um, I will speak to you soon. Hello Year 12s, I hope you are doing well and welcome to the second part of our video. So I did tell you last time that obviously we were going to split this into two because otherwise I'll be talking for half an hour and nobody wants that. Um, although to be honest with you, I don't really mind. But um, today we're just going to talk about other types or other styles of uh, displaying information and I'm going to ask you to do some exam questions um, and to finish your PowerPoint if you haven't done so okay so the first thing is um, let's start with braille text and tactile um, images right so both of them obviously are quite useful for visually impaired um, people students uh, and they can be very helpful um, for them to be able to obviously read and understand um, the the text the context etc okay so Braille is obviously an example of a tactile image if you think about it because tactile images are images that you can actually interpret it by touch so if you think about Braille which is like the little dots on a piece of paper you can interpret it that by touch, okay? Uh, tactile images are very, very um, useful, okay? Uh, think about an architect. I think I always think about um, architecture when I'm thinking about things that you can touch. If, if an architect wants to design a building, okay? Obviously, you will design it. You will do it on a computer. It will show you. But at the end of the day, you actually need to see how it will look like. So they normally will create something, an object, and you could actually see it, okay? Um, you Nowadays, we have uh, obviously uh, 3D printers that will allow us to create uh, objects very easily, things that we can, we can touch. Users can better understand the physical environment or perspective design if it's physically built so like i said the architect thing okay if someone actually builds um and you can visually see it you will make more sense than actually see it on on a computer you can say that but well seeing on a computer is, is very similar which is true nowadays especially with 3d modeling and and all of that Okay, uh, visually impaired users can feel the object instead of being able to see it, obviously. And tactile images can be used as prototypes. So as I was saying, again, architects um, are the best prototypes that I can think. Okay, the only issue with tactile images is that they are quite hard to, um, to move around because, I mean, they can be huge. So you don't want to have to take like a massive prototype of a you know a five thousand dollar building um which i don't think it's possible to have a building that only costs five thousand i meant five million um building you don't want to have to be moving around or a building that has like a hundred uh floors you don't want to have to be moving around that uh from one place to another and it's hard you can break etc and uh Creating it requires special equipment. So, like I said, for example, a 3D printer. Okay, you might need a 3D printer to create them. Uh, Braille, on the other hand, is normally used more by visually impaired um, people. Okay, uh, 
Devices like a braille, a braille terminal convert characters on a screen into braille. So it, for people that can't see, that is uh, very useful, as you can imagine, because they can actually understand the, the context. Um, unfortunately, although it's awesome for them, it's not used um, as much. And plus, even visually impaired um, people need to learn how to read braille. So that is the downside of it, okay? That not a lot of people will use it and you can only display a limited amount of information. Uh, but, on the other hand, you do have a braille printer, which, uh, to be honest with you, when I was researching that, I didn't know, but it does make sense, right? Because you need to print it, uh, it differently, so you need a printer to, to do that and to, to make sure that people they can't see actually can read the text. All right, so that is... Braille text and tactile images, all right? The next one is table spreadsheets and charts, uh, and graphs, sorry. So table spreadsheet charts and graphs. Um, you, you, you already see uh, this uh, daily. You use them daily as well. And obviously, if you think about them, you understand that they are very useful to display information, okay? So charts and graphs, they can display information visually, uh, especially information that is related with numbers, which is amazing. Tables and spreadsheets, again, visually, but it can be with words as well, okay? Uh, so it can be text and, and numbers. What are the benefits of using, for example, a, a chart and a graph? Well, it's again easy to visualize and to understand it summarizes a lot of information in one images in image sorry and displaying information in a graph allows user to easily identify trends okay and you can make comparisons so it's quite visual and it's quite easy to understand think about the daily briefings that we have on coronavirus or the weekly briefings if you if you want um they always like to show a little graph. Why? Because visually you can see the curve, you can see if it's going up or down, and you can then understand it's getting better or it's getting worse. If they showed you or they just uh, gave you a piece of text with all of that information, it would be way overwhelming than just showing you um, a chart or a graph, okay? In terms of tables, you do know that you can use a um, database that has tables and spreadsheets uh, that have tables as well. Now, with databases, for example, you can make queries, you can create forms, you can create reports, um, which is gathering information for you in an easy way. And with spreadsheets, uh, it's the same. You can import data to a spreadsheet, you can export data, you can do conditional formatting, you can even do some if statements. So all of those, um, or all four of them, are very useful to display information in a very easy way. And tables and, ch and um, spreadsheets, you can actually manipulate the data to suit whatever scenario you, you want, okay? And the last one today, it's a Boolean. Now, a Boolean is a data type that can only have two values, true, false, yes or no. And you might be thinking, well, is that actually useful? Yeah, think about um, when they uh, do little questionnaires. They absolutely love to ask yes, no questions. Think about the doctor. When you go, when you change GPs, yeah, think about those huge forms that your parents have to fill in um, for you or you have to do it yourself, so I'm not sure. But uh, those huge forms normally are, have you ever had this condition? Yes or no? That condition? Yes or no? no, no. So they, they, it's a very easy way, again, to visually spot yes or no, true or false. This happened, this didn't happen, okay? So it's a very powerful um, information style. Now, uh, before I just show you the task that you have to do, which I told you at the beginning of this video, yeah. I just want to kind of make a little summary on information styles. It's important that you understand that different styles will suit different scenarios. And you always have to remember that, okay? You can't just say this style is better than that style because you like it. There are scenarios and situations where that style that you like it will not actually work. I mean, images are great, but sometimes we need words to express what actually the image represents. Because, you know, when you're going to a museum and you uh, watch paint uh, or you're going to see some paintings, you, the interpretation 
what you see, okay, the way that you interpret that is not the same as the person next to you, okay? And that's that's um, the issue with information styles is that they don't all fit in all situations, all right? You're not going to show a chart or a table in a situation where uh, you just need to use words and you don't really need numbers, okay? So keep that in the back of your mind. And for today, I want you to complete the exam questions that are going to be set on set one or a Google Classroom and finish the PowerPoint from last lesson, okay? This PowerPoint is going to be your kind of revision material so make sure that is done nicely you could if you want create some uh, mind map as well on the different styles okay i will add that into your task but it's like an extra just if you still have a couple of minutes uh, left just do like a little mind map about it well i hope this was useful i hope that it made sense and i shall see you next time thank you Please like and subscribe to the channel so that you can get updates as the videos are uploaded.